Booster Course Wave 3 for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is here, and we're checking out all changes and differences made for the returning courses. The second race of the Rock Cup is GBA Boo Lake. Taking place during twilight in the middle of a lake haunted by boos, it features a collapsed pier with many lampposts, all leading into the aquatic abyss. So how does the most recent update differ from past installments? Let's find out. Presented much like Ghost Valley in Super Mario Kart, Boo Lake in Mario Kart Super Circuit had a pier over a bottomless pit with many gaps, ramps, and a couple of sneaky bridge shortcuts. Tour transformed this flat track into full 3D, giving it various angled slopes in modified turns, with half of the path being underwater. Now for the latest version based on the Tour model, both the sloped portions and underwater section are in anti-gravity mode, but there are many more little hidden details to find. Quite a few gameplay changes were made from the transition to 3D. All along the sides of the path are block barriers. Like with classic Ghost Valley courses, these could be destroyed in the original just by touching them. But since Tour, they have been made indestructible, with many more of them added in spots, with others removed for deterioration aesthetics. And because of their placements, it's now possible to drive along them in some areas. Since Tour, lamp posts replaced the candle holding booze, with even more lamp posts installed throughout. The two jumps after the first bend have much narrower gaps, and all dash panels were removed. Nonetheless, all ramps were made to have gaps in the planks after them, although falling in may be possible only in the Switch version. Can anyone confirm? Either way, ramps seem to be just a bit more level than in Tour, and some barrier blocks adjacent to them have been adjusted for presentation. Immediately after the first ramp, the path dipped into the lake up until the next ramp. This no longer happens in the revision, and the barrier blocks accommodate this change. Just before the split path in the original was a dark, narrow bridge that glowed every so many seconds, providing a shortcut across the chasm. This was removed for tour, and the path was readjusted to fill its place. That's disappointing. At the same time, the ramp that allowed leaping over the hole splitting the path was removed, and the broken planks around it modified its shape. Furthermore, the left side became wider than the right when compared to the equal width in Super Circuit. Now, an arrow sign on blocks can be seen where the ramp used to be. Once the roots merge, an anti-gravity panel marks the start of the first slope. Leading up to the corner in the original, the path took several bends. The approach was simplified in Tour, just offering a straight dash to the apex. Making a full U-turn, the pier took a full plunge into the lake after a new ramp, marking the beginning of the underwater section. Here, fish bones could be found, serving only as mild obstructions. A wide ramp and a little ramp on the right side were added to the start of this section, whereas the GBA version was devoid of all ramps for this diagonal path, although it had a narrow part in the middle that Tour removed. Now, the path extends to the right in the immediate area around the small ramp, but it's not really beneficial. What is beneficial is using a mushroom to cross the off-road shortcut at the simplified acute bend through the breakable cutouts that were barrels in Tour. This part used to be a lighter bridge originally. The ramp that came after and the field of ramps that followed were taken out in Tour. However, the final set of ramps were reduced and rearranged significantly. One long ramp, then two short ramps divided by new blocks, and finally another long ramp to launch drivers out of the water just before the finish line. For the latest revision, the first ramp was split into two, and an anti-gravity panel was placed at the water's edge. Because of the layout of the course and ramps, it's very difficult to backtrack. Next, let's have a look at the visual changes. In the original, a dynamic skyline could be seen, transitioning from night to a bluish twilight at the start, then becoming night again during the final lap, similar to Sunset Wilds in the same game. For Tour, this became a consistent orange, but billowy clouds were added. Along with a redesigned manor, abandoned fortresses could be seen in the background amidst mountains where rocky spires used to be. With the addition of actual lake water, rocky islets rested along the lakeside, with some having dead trees and grass clumps, and on the lake bed. Also sticking out of the water were the tips of lampposts, an odd sight from the surface. Tur even introduced numerous booze floating above, haunting the area. Now the muted cerulean sky is back, with a bright and eerie blue moon amidst different moonlit clouds. Swoops can be spotted flying out of a mansion window to hide behind a rock. What could be back there? The booze roaming the locale all became fully modeled, and since this whole region is dark, we must use headlights at all times. Investigating the pole position, a new wooden sign with hanging lanterns and the classic logo was added in tour, but the starting grid markers that were made brown are now white again. Still looking at the boards, the original pier had plank patches and support posts underneath, but tour removed the patches and included horizontal braces between the posts. Now, wetness in either mineral deposits or white mold can be found all over the wood, even underwater. 
Approaching the first bend, a red arrow was put here in tour, but it has since been yanked out. The ramp ahead and those throughout the track were the tour standard, but now the style is more suitable for the environment. Approaching the apex of the initial slope in the DLC, we see a peg where a pumpkin used to be in tour, but research seems to indicate that this block was the same as any other. Could it be a reference to the Halloween tour? Mysterious. Taking a dive in tour, shattered and unlit lamppost bulbs were found, as well as broken glass on the pier beneath them. These lampposts were all altered to having missing bulbs and all broken glass was washed away. At the last big turn in tour is an alternate path that other variants of the course used, but now a lone arrow sign was installed pointing where to go, but also a bit towards the dilapidated support structure that remains as a memorial to this route. We pay our respects. There are a couple of auditory changes. The laughing from the candle holding booze when driving under them disappeared along with these ghosts in tour, but the booze floating above now cackle every so often. Furthermore, the opening soundscape seems unique now, with wind, the aforementioned booze, and even a howling wolf in the distance. How ominous. The music is delightfully eerie with falling arpeggios, a dirge-like melody, wailing, and a bit of freestyle drums and funky bass. Shared with Broken Pier, the original theme blended sampled instruments with chiptune elements common with Game Boy Advance soundtracks. It's pretty neat, but if it sounds familiar, that's because it's an arrangement of Ghost Valley, using the same melody while modifying other parts enough to be distinct. This in turn was inspired by Super Mario World's Ghost House theme, Haunted House. Now that's a spooky reference. The remix for Tour was faithful to the original, utilizing a Vox melody, swelling tremolo strings, more aggressive drums, and a menacing slap bass. It's good, even if a bit safe. But the latest take on the theme seems to master the presentation of this, offering cleaner bells, swelling that alternates between higher and lower pitches, pipe organ, and drums with atmospheric plate reverb, as well as both string bass and synth bass. Stunning. And yet this enhancement of a remix of an arrangement of an inspiration goes to show that the original elegy of booze haunts us to this very day. And that's about it for all changes we found in GBA Boo Lake. The course provides a fairly well-balanced, dynamic experience of an otherwise simple course with well-placed ramps and anti-gravity both inside the water and out. But what do you think? Have you found any notable changes that we missed? Let us know in the comments below. And of course, stay tuned to Game Explain for more on Booster Course Wave 3 for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and other things Nintendo too. Thanks for watching. Until next time, ciao.